Okay, everybody, here we go. It's me, Gregory Manorino. Tuesday, January 16, 2024. Pre-market report. So let's 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 do this. First off, uh, if you are paying any attention to what's happening here, you're watching a significant jump higher this morning with regard to the U.S. dollar on a relative strength basis, and this is putting a little pressure on uh, gold and silver right now. But let's let's uh, let's examine something else just real quick. So as we all know, as is standard procedure, okay, um, weekends, holidays, after market hours, uh, these these uh, attacks from the Houthi rebels uh, just happen to occur. It's miraculous. Actually, it's not just the Houthi rebels. It's uh, this is a phenomenon that goes on constantly. These supposed attacks happen all the time. Uh, without without wavering, without exemption, during weekends, during holidays, during aftermarket hours. That shit alone should tell you something. Okay, now, we understand what happened after market hours uh, last week here, Thursday, Friday, uh, you know, these m apparent multiple attacks from the United States and its al allies now, their new coalition partners, all non brics nations, uh, on on targets in Yemen because the Iranian-backed Houthis are hanging out over there. Okay, um, and you know we watched how the ten-year yield dropped. Nice, definitely stock market positive this morning though. Things are a little different. Ten-year yield rising above four percent. The dollar this morning knee-jerk higher. That's fear. Fear. Why? Okay. The market is anticipating something. What could that possibly be? Well, let's look back at what else happened over the weekend and the holiday weekend and yesterday. So apparently, uh, the those pesky Houthis uh, that are backed by Iran, remember that, um, they fired two missiles. One at a U.S. destroyer that was intercepted, apparently, and a second one at a U.S.-owned ship which hit it but caused no damage. Whatever. So the market is... A little fearful about what may happen here because, you know, our illustrious president, he's just a beautiful man, he's already threatened to hit more targets over there if the Houthis don't stop because they are very, very bad. <laughs> it's amazing how they're selling this, this to people here. They want to draw Iran into this so bad. The United States, the UK uh, especially, and the, the coalition here wants to draw... I ran into this so bad they can taste it. And again, uh, we covered this. Uh, right now, the Pentagon right now is planning on how they're going to sell this to the American people. And that's worrisome to me. It means more people are going to die, unfortunately. Uh, so anyway, on the back of these, you know, on the weekend attacks, holidays, and after the market closes, uh, the market is a little fearful about these missiles that were fired by the bad, bad, bad Houthis. You know, look, uh, you buy any of this? I don't <laughs> buy any. I think it's all just uh, all propaganda. It's all, again, a game that they play. You know, they knew where the missiles are. You know, the ones that Iraq was hiding, they knew exactly where they were. But they couldn't find them because they were never there. Oh, but the American people bought that hook, line, and sinker as well, and there were, there's no accountability. Look, they can do whatever they want. They string the public along. It's an incredible thing here. And they, and, and, and it's sad because... Uh, you know, some people believe it's all true, and it's just not. It's a means to an end. This is all central bank run. They're they're determined to fulfill their goal. And with regard to fulfilling their goal, look, in case you guys and girls think it's over, we are in a full-blown, full-on liquidity crisis. Liquidity is drying up. Uh, even though the world... I want you to consider this. It's, it's an astonishing phenomenon. Even though the world today is carrying its largest debt load in the history of, of, of the world, humanity, central banking, or whatever. Again, that's the nature of the beast here, the debt-based economic model. There's not enough of it. There's not enough debt. I know how crazy that sounds, but that's the way, that's the nature of the beast. The debt-based economic model is, uh, it's a perpetual black hole. It is uh, a, an economic uh, vacuum. That's all it is here. You have to understand, and it just won't stop. It's, it's not designed to stop until central banks decide to pull the plug. What are they doing? You know this already. They're setting up all the groundwork here 
for a new system, a new tokenized system. They have to dismantle the current one first, and that's exactly what they're doing. Do you think it's any coincidence why today the world, the world today, not just here in the United States, people live in boxes, they think it's just happening here, but around the world, the world economy is in free fall. Um, the consumer is being destroyed, okay, all by design. Uh, more slaves to the system, more dependency. All the stuff you and I have outlined would happen from years ago. Here it is. It's in our face. And in case you don't know, this is about to get much worse because central banks are not done by a long shot. And a lot of this, right now, I mean, they've, they've already set the groundwork up here. More war, more pain, more death, more suffering to pull more cash into the now, to fake liquidity, the illusion of liquidity. Um, and again, with this 10-year yield now bumping above 4%, it's not going to last. I don't care. It's not going to last. And then you got the freak show. You got this Federal Reserve derelict imbecile and this other one, they're floating out. Oh, oh, rates are going to remain higher for longer nonsense. This is just the game that they always play. They say one thing, they do the polar opposite. They got the economy where they want it. Okay, uh, it's over. They got the consumer where they want it. Over. Now, the next phase here is to pour more easy money into the market to keep it buoyed. So this 4% on the 10-year yield, I'm not saying it won't go a little higher. It's going much lower as we move forward. How how they will do that in the immediate uh, timeline is, again, watch what's going to happen. More bombs, more missiles, more attacks by the United States and their coalition partners, all non-BRICS nations, on Yemen and whoever else they want to point that war, our war machine at that you and I fund. Actually, that's not true. The central banks pay for it all here. We don't have any cash here. Uh, the United States, the largest debtor nation in the history of the world, the laughing stock. It's unfortunate, that, but that's actually these. But the whole world is, uh, uh, you know, they're all, it's a this it's a slave world to central banks who are the government. Anyway, you all know that. Um, anyway. So we, just just watch, watch for more propaganda, listen for more propaganda, more lies, more distractions, more deceptions. Does this sound familiar to you? Because I outlined all of this at the end of last year, how this would play out in 2024. The year of war, the year of really off the Richter scale, deceptions, distractions, look here, they don't look over there. That's what's going on here. And um, so you can expect all this to play out exactly as we have said it would. Now, on the back of all this, as I said, you got a knee-jerk higher in the dollar. That's fear. You get the 10-year yield higher. Not going to last. They're going to bring it down either by more war or the Fed's going to get in here and buy more debt. This means opportunity, as I outlined yesterday. We are surrounded by not just little puffs of loveliness, people, which they're everywhere, but we're surrounded by opportunity, in my opinion, here. Let them play their games. We're going to play ours. We're way smarter than they are because we know what they want. We know what they're going to do. We know their end game, period. How can we be beat? It's impossible, in my view. Absolutely impossible. So uh, with regard to other assets, well, let's talk about the major market indices. Right now, on the back of the 10-year yield higher and the knee-jerk higher in the dollar, that's fear, okay? You got stock futures slightly lower, nothing major, but lower nonetheless. Uh, gold and silver, as I said, are lower on the um, relative strength of the dollar kicking higher. Crude oil, higher this morning, not by much, but higher nonetheless. You got cryptocurrencies, um, you know, holding their own. Bitcoin somewhere around 43,000, down from about 49,000 just prior to the announcement of this ETF. No surprise that Bitcoin fell. You all knew it would. We outlined it right here. I told people to sell at the top right there. I said, get out of it. I said, and buy again when it drops. I knew it was going to drop. So did you. Um, Wall Street always sell the news, sell the news, sell the news. It plays out nine times out of 10. And obviously that worked here too. Um, I still believe Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in aggregate are massively undervalued along with uh, gold and silver in this insane, twisted, upside down freak show of an environment. Um, that's just that's just the way it is. People look for opportunity. I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you here. Yeah, uh, and I and I always have outlined for you. This is this channel is for people of action, not people who just want to sit back and do nothing. Okay, we we need to do things here. We need to uh, understand the current situation. Think or, you know, uh, conceptualize where this is all going. And I'm telling you, we're not going to be right 100% of the time, but we are going to be right the vast majority of the time. And we don't have to be right 100% of the time. Nobody does, okay, in, in this kind of an environment. Um, 
you know, we're not performing brain surgery or something. Uh, we're just trying to figure out the most likely places which cash is going to move through the markets. It's not a hard thing. It's really not. Although, you know, they, they want you to think it is. And they think that we don't know what's going on here and what central banks are trying to pull off. They're the enemy people. And I mean the enemy bar none of the highest possible order. And it's only going to get worse from here. I guarantee you that. There's just no doubt about it. Um, pretty much that's where we stand here. We got, again, risk in this market. This is all about risk. All right. The MMRI this morning. 257 last time I looked at it, it's not going to last either. Um, that will be dropping, especially when more bombs and missiles start to fall in the Middle East. And uh, in case you don't know, that's exactly what's going on here, all right? Uh, the Pentagon, uh, the, cent the central banks, they're, they're foaming at the mouth, foaming at the mouth, thinking about how badly they want to draw Iran into this conflict here. Again, this is a message being sent to the BRICS nations. Don't mess with the petrodollar. That's all this is. And you knew this way ahead of time anyway. All right, we discussed it right here over and over and over again how this would play out. Well, here you go. You see? <laughs> we got that right again too. All right, people, look, I love you a lot from the heart. I mean that. All of you, you're awesome. Uh, thanks for being here. I will see all of you later, 4.05 p.m. Eastern time for my live stream. Hope to see you there. All right, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Have some questions ready for me, and we will uh, address all that later. All right, see you later.